Elden Ring is a sprawling, incredible game with tons to see. Like for instance, did you know you can completely miss a bunch of the bosses in the game? Yeah, hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best optional bosses in Elden Ring. Now, this is of course gonna entail a spoiler alert here. These are optional secret bosses that you can miss if you don't know to look for them. Starting off with number 10, the Spirit Caller Snail. This unique encounter is found at the bottom of the roads and catacombs and caught us totally by surprise. Like when you first enter the boss area, uh, you're greeted by this gigantic ghostly knight that will crush you like flat in a matter of seconds if you let him. But there's also something off about it. So the obvious tip off is the name. I mean, the boss is called the Spirit Caller Snail, not the Ghostly Tree Knight. I know snails and you, sir, are no snail. Uh, so obviously he is not the actual boss. Instead, if you find a little glowing area on the floor and attack it, the real enemy reveals itself. A weird snake snail thing that's actually responsible for summoning this guy. After attacking it, this creature teleports away and turns invisible again, so you have to hunt it down while this big guy is still attacking you. It is not possible to kill the ghostly tree knight. It's a ghost. He's already dead. So the only strategy you really have is just run around playing whack-a-mole with the weird snail thing. Like, it's actually not that hard of a boss if you avoid the ghost knight. It's just a really weird encounter. And even if you do start seeing these snails pop up more after the fight, it's a weird enough encounter we wanted to include it here. And number nine is Star Scourge Radon. Yeah, you heard us right. This guy is a shard bearer, basically the equivalent of a Lord Soul and Dark Souls game. And he's completely optional. If you don't want to fight this guy, you don't have to. And I can see a lot of players opting out because the first few times you try to fight him, whew, he seems impossible. Everything about this boss is actually pretty unique for a Souls game. Instead of the standard run through dungeon, fight boss at end formula you normally get for bosses, uh, this guy's castle, Red Main Castle, is completely cleared out. Not a bad Bad guy in sight. Instead, when you go inside, you're invited to join something called the Radon Festival, where warriors gather to try to take this gigantic dude down. So to fight him, all you have to do is agree to take part, take the elevator out the back, and wow, there you're on the battlefield. And if your experience is like mine, basically what happens, you enter that arena, the guy shoots an arrow at you from across the map, and you die. This guy's attacks hit hard, and just getting to him can be tough enough. Thankfully, you do get some help. There's summoning signs all over the place, and you can use that to call in some allies, even if they don't last particularly long. Their presences are, are pretty much essential for keeping this guy's attention off you, so you can do any real damage to him. Probably the most nasty thing about this fight is that halfway through when he jumps up into the air and comes crashing down like a meteor. Not a fan of that. And it's basically a gotcha because if you don't immediately start sprinting or jump on your spirit steed and ride away, the impact's instant death. Uh, probably my favorite thing about this guy though is he's a gigantic monster but rides around on a little normal sized horse. It, it's ridiculous and, and, and just fantastic and weird and, and I don't know what made them think of doing that. I mean, just look at the little horse go. It, it it's great. And number eight is the Godskin Apostle. For most players, the first time you'll encounter one of these freaks is at the top of the Windmill Village in the Altus region, and they make one hell of an impression. The place is already creepy enough with the strange dancing villagers that look like they came right out of Midsummer, and then you get to the top of the hill and this guy shows up wearing what looks like a hood made out of a face. He starts off really aggressive, spinning his weird cycle weapon and throwing magic at you. He's unique and weird looking, but it's not until you get him down to around 60% health that it really starts getting weird. That's when he reveals his crazy stretching torso. Like, he's Mr. Fantastic crossed with Leatherface, and uh, frankly, that's intimidating. More of these guys show up later, but the first encounter is really something special. His grotesque appearance combined with his bizarre moveset make this dude one of the most memorable encounters in the game. And number seven is Patches. We can't make a list like this without mentioning the Patches boss fight. He's a guy most Souls players wouldn't mind having a chance to beat on for a while. He's a nuisance and basically shows up in all of From's games, so of course he makes an appearance in Elden Ring as well. What makes this boss great is less the encounter itself, which is pretty simple, and well, it's more the surprise and presentation. I went to this random location called Murkwater Cave and obviously didn't expect a whole lot, and after you deal with a bandit ambush, you enter a suspicious arena shaped room with a chest sitting at the center. If you open the chest, the battle begins with Patches jumping down from a ledge accusing you of stealing. Which in this case is accurate, you were just robbing him, so his behavior is 
basically understandable. Uh, he uses his classic weapons and everything, a big shield, a little spear, which you should be able to easily bypass, by the way. Once you get him to around 30-40% health, he gives up and instead offers to sell you some mostly overpriced junk. He does have more tricks up his sleeve after this, but for now he's playing nice. This is another boss that isn't particularly difficult, just a funny little encounter with a returning classic character. And number six is the Mimic tier, which is deep underground, and it's possible to find it in the mysterious lost city known as Nakron, the Eternal City. This entire location is totally optional, but it's one of the coolest in the game, and as long as you're thorough, it's not too hard to actually find. Soon after entering, you start encountering these weird silver slime creatures that aren't terribly threatening on their own. So when you enter this area and see one, you're probably thinking, there's not a whole lot to worry about, but this one's different. Instead of just sitting in place and sometimes weakly attempting to poke you, this one transforms into a doppelganger of you. It's got the same armor, uses the same weapons, and even attached to the same Ashes of War that you currently have equipped. So depending on your build, this guy might be really easy or a huge pain in the ass. Now if you're an armored guy, that probably means the boss isn't too hard, but still a fun surprise. Not the hardest encounter, but one of the most unique. And number five is Wormface. I, what, what do we need to say here? It's a monster called Wormface. Of course it's going on his list. You encounter this thing guarding the minor Erd tree outside the capital in Altus, and it's definitely something different. A giant, elongated human with a hood covering its face, and uh, based on the name, we'll give you a single guess as to what it's hiding. Yeah, its head is a bunch of worms. It's disgusting, but what really makes it terrible is that a lot of its attacks spread black mist that causes instant death, and obviously we don't like that. That's kind of bad. It doesn't pull anything too shocking, so it's something a lot of players will be able to deal with on their first try, but still. It's a monster with its face made of worms, and it's called Worm Face. It's memorable, and it's pretty disgusting looking, and, and honestly, it's pretty tense. It's just not super challenging. Once you figure out that you can win, you do. And number four is the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. Found deep in the underground of the other Eternal City, yes, there are two of them, this one called Noxtella, this boss is pretty much everything you'd want from a Dark Souls boss. He's huge, very aggressive, and you fight it in a crazy arena. Like, seriously, look at the corpse, it's gigantic. For the first half of this thing, it just shambles around like a really badass looking zombie, but once you whittle away enough of its health, it starts suddenly waking up, sprouting wings and chucking electricity bolts, uh, and, and, and it shouldn't come as any surprise, but these bolts will mess you up quick. Those wings aren't just for show either. He starts flying around, dive bombing, and pelting you with more magic lightning while you're desperately trying to avoid taking damage. It is just an all-around cool boss that you don't have any reason to fight other than that it is a worthwhile experience. And number three is the Ancestor Spirit. Now, there are a lot of really cool optional bosses hidden in the underground sections of this game, but the Ancestor Spirit is one of the coolest. To encounter this guy, you gotta light up a bunch of bonfires in the underground river of Siofra, and after that, head to the Hollowhorn Grounds and interact with the glowing beast body. That'll take you into the arena where you face off against the Ancestor Spirit, and while it's not an incredibly difficult fight or anything, the creature's just so cool and majestic, it, it just deserves a spot on the list. One of its coolest attacks is when it starts galloping through the air while breathing blue fire, or this one where it trots in the air before crashing down on you. This is one boss where the music and animations really stand out and make it unique. The actual encounter isn't the hardest in the game, but the animations are so good and the music's so unique that it stands out as one of the best in my mind. At number two, the god-devouring serpent, Rickard, the Lord of Blasphemy. I love his name. It gives me a little chuckle every time. All right, so this is like deep spoiler territory, though. Uh, hidden in the depths of the volcano manor, this guy is a sight to behold. He really pulls out all the stops to kill you. He tries to bite, spray acid, spread lava. He's so big it requires a special weapon to even fight him, so it sort of works like other gimmick bosses in the Soul series like the Storm King. But the difference here is that this guy will mess you up, even when you've got a weapon designed specifically for killing him. And while his first form is bizarre, the second form is straight up crazy. The snake head dies and a human face appears on the side of the snake's body, and he tries to kill you with a sword covered with still living bodies. It's an insane visual that goes along with an insane fight, because in form 2 this guy is just done playing around. He's also got some crazy attacks like summoning a skull that leaves behind a trail of explosions. And worst of all, uh, there's this part where he just summons dozens of flaming 
skulls from the ceiling that hone in on you and explode. The only way to survive is just run, and if one catches you, it's probably going to mean death. The entire encounter is one of the most unique and challenging in the entire Souls series, and while it's a gimmick because you have to use a special weapon to fight him, it's probably one of the best gimmick bosses that I can remember in a From game. I mean, look at it. They really went next level. And finally, number one, Astel, Natural Born of the Void. Found in the deepest, darkest pit of the world, the only way to even fight this thing is to struggle through the nightmarish Lake of Rot, a place anyone with any sense would probably never go. Uh, I just nope out the second they saw it. If, if you somehow manage to survive this poison swamp on steroids, then you can ride this coffin down by the river and appear in this random cave containing one of the craziest bosses ever devised by the madmen at From Software. I mean, just look at this thing. It's an alien centipede with a skull face, giant pincers, a single eyeball on the forehead, uh, and it's floating on what looks like space while beating on you with gravity attacks. There's a lot of stuff this guy can do, and trying to get a good beating on him is incredibly difficult. Just finding the opportunity to attack is difficult on its own, because if you get too close, it'll slam the ground with these magic attacks that are basically unavoidable, and you can either tank them or get away, and for most people, tanking them is not an option. Like most of the big bosses on this list, this guy really gets tough after losing about 50% health. That's when he starts pulling out attacks like summoning the massive volley of meteors to crush you like a bug, uh, and all the crazy ways that this thing can chew you up, throw you around, and be you. They're all next level. He's no joke. Just finding it's an ordeal by itself and taking it on is a huge challenge. It's also really satisfying, though, when you finally manage to take it down. This guy's probably the closest thing we'll ever get to Bloodborne 2, and that alone makes it one of the best optional bosses in the game. And a quick bonus point for you, Millennia Blade of Mikella. She is yet another optional shard bearer that's found in her own massive secret area. Uh, Millennia, at first glance, seems like your standard Dark Souls guy in armor style boss, but she's got one really nasty trick up her sleeve that makes her a lot harder. Yeah, notice anything strange about her health bar, like how it keeps getting refilled? Yeah, every time she hits you, she restores her health, and to really make her a pain in the ass, it even works when you're blocking. And that health restored isn't like a little bit, like just a few hits on you, and she'll be back to near max health, which completely negates any progress you thought you made. It is an unbelievably difficult fight that forces you to play carefully and really learn her attack patterns. The only thing that makes her not totally impossible is that she has relatively low low HP, and it's not too hard to break her poise, but that's basically it. She just restores so much health every time she hits you that if you want to win, you pretty much have to avoid getting hit, and that's easier said than done. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.